All right. Taddy? Uh, 142 to the pin. Yep. Uh, wind is not as much in, more from the left. Okay. I still like to play a little bit more, about 145. Okay. And I think that's uh, how far you should play it. Carry. All right, just right of the pin. Hang on, the wind's got a little bit. Ooh. Okay. Just shy pin high is, is rolling back now too. Darn. Okay. Well, I'm dancing. Sometimes, sometimes that's just good. <laughs> when your game's not in good shape, you're just happy to be on the green. Or when you have a caddy that's just kind of new to the whole experience. Mm. <laughs> what club do you got? Well, I've got the eight iron. I think fish, once we get past the wedges, I think fish hits it a little bit farther than I do. I was gonna try and just drive it in there just a little bit lower too. Maybe it takes a hop back there. So I think this is, I think this is gonna work out good. I like that a lot. Again, thin, worst shot of the day, and left. Ooh. But <laughs> with a good chip, he could be back in this. This is what this is the tough part about this game, huh, Todd? I mean, we we see we see professional golfers getting pretty frustrated after a shot that they don't like, and it's ridiculous because the next shot could just they could hole it out. It I mean, that's be, how that's how good they are. It could be phenomenal. They are they are incredibly talented people more so than uh, sometimes even they believe they are. Yeah. And so their ability to recover is sometimes better than what they think that they can do. But on, on the flip side of that is they are human beings. And so they are from time to time capable of hitting bad shots where they do need to recover from. Most people think they're just machines and they're, ne you know, they're never gonna hit an offline shot. Yeah. But they do and, and they do have the ability to recover from it as well. And that, that's at that point in time where the caddy needs to reinforce at that point in time, it's good to say, hey, we got this. It's an easy up and down from there. We've got a lot of green to work with. And that's really on you to know that, to know that that is an easy up and down. And sometimes you'll kind of move them towards that, huh? Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, again, that's knowledge of the course and being able to, at, the, at that moment in time, being able to say, hey, we got, a lot of, we got a lot of green to work with. It's uphill from there. Shouldn't be any problem. We got this. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> oh my. Loved it. Part of the game. It is part of the game. Yeah. See, that's kind of a funny thing. I mean, um, you're literally. Actually, I'm going to putt this. Okay. Yep. You didn't hit that very far, and yet you're still going to switch clubs. That's just fascinating. You're going to putt it, huh? I'm going to putt it. The, the lie is a little dicey. It's a little thin. It's not the greatest lie in the world. Um, I think I have as good a chance as any with the putter. Settle. I have a question. I'm listening. So Gabe's tending the flag right there. What if he actually was not able to pull that flag out in time, and your putt hit that, hit that, uh, hit that pin, and he's your caddy? In, at this point in time, since I was actually off the green, yep. there wouldn't be a penalty. But if he were tending the flag and he was my caddy and I was putting from on the green, that would be a penalty. What if, I, what if my caddy had been tending? You were on the green, my caddy tended the flag for yours because yours was raking the bunker, and it hits. Whose fault? My caddy's or yours? Or your? Or your? I, I believe since I asked your caddy to tend that for me, and I'm the one making the stroke, and it hits the flag, it hits the flag stick, my belief is that it's still a penalty on me. Hmm. Now, we would, we would have, on the PGA Tour, we have rules officials that are roaming the course, and, and we would be able to ask them, yeah. actually, who, Which, who's the penalty on at gotcha. that point in time. Gabe, I'd have you read this, but it's just pretty much, like, it's a more of a field putt, because it's so long, it's not one of those ones that's that makeable, you're just trying to get it close. That uh, feels like a victory to me. Now, this is a little bit of a match here, so you could give me this. Um, uh, I don't need that. I could give that to you. You're not going to. Um, I think I will. I think, it's, I think it's good. You know what? I think there's an advantage to that because not allowing me to get some practice in is a good thing, especially because I've already won this hole. Absolutely. <laughs> Smart. Caddy. Chop, chop, there's some clubs over here. And then, uh, Caddy, there's also this right here, too, if you could kind of get this over here. Okay, thank you. 
you know, it really feels good to like not have a bag on my back and just, you know, feel loose and <laughs> it just feels good. I feel, I feel like a pro golfer. Now that caddy, he's got to be fast. He's got to get back up with us or maybe even further ahead of us because he's got to get that yardage. So that, <laughs> that's, that's part of the thing. Like caddies, they actually they not got to hustle. They have to hustle. I mean, not only, it's not just about like the things you were talking about and getting there early and actually getting all those numbers and being, you know, being that confidant for your player, motivator, mathematician, weatherman. But on top of that, you got to get there because when we get there, we're ready to hit. Exactly. And so he's got to be a little ahead of us all the time, and he's got the weight. We want to know the information when we get there. So you noticed he didn't know which tee to go he to. He still doesn't. And he's kind of like looking he's around. Lost. Okay, he's got some of this. Now he's pacing it off. He's, he doesn't know which, which hole to look at. Yeah. Hey, Gabe, are, are we on the right hole? Yeah, he's got it. Okay. Whew. Okay, so we got 78 yards to the pin. Minus seven for the slope, so we're looking at 73. 73. And then... Um, that wind? 71, but anyway, 71. Okay, 71. So obviously caddies don't have to be math majors. That's very important. Wind's coming from the left. Is that a little hurt there? No, no, no hurt. Okay, just a straight left to right, you think? Yeah, 71. Carry 73. Now, you, Todd, you said this T wedge, which I guess that's a trouble wedge, is a 60 degree? 60 degrees, yes. Hmm. How far do you usually hit your 60 degree wedge? Like there? 85. And how far did he tell you he wanted you to hit it? 70. Three. Three. However, there's no club less than this, so I have to kind of use a little finesse or a half swing or a three quarter swing. It's a short shot, but a little intimidating. That's why I love this game. Even the short shots can be, can be hard. Well, it's interesting how downhill shots can feel intimidating. Yeah, very true. I'm going to use that wind a little bit. Let's see what happens. Ooh, great shot. Very thank nice. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. How the yardage has been so far? Yardages have been stellar. Very good. It's about the only thing that's been good. I think it's too far. Thanks. Caddies do occasionally get to hit shots. Not, so not in the tournament, but like in practice rounds. Am I wrong? Right? Occasionally they do, and, and historically, there's a handful of courses where it's almost expected that caddies do. One of the more famous ones is Pebble Beach on the seventh, seventh hole. Yeah, yep. the par three, yeah. Seventh hole, par three. It's, it's almost expected that the caddy hits a shot there. Okay. Can we get? Go ahead. Well, I was gonna say I was kind of for my buddy over there at PJ National, the with the bear trap, you know, and one of those par threes. I don't know, water on the right hole, 16 or something. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I actually hit it closer than my player, and uh, he said that's the last time you ever hit a shot. <laughs> <laughs> going around again. Yeah. And another one we know, TPC Sawgrass, the infamous number 17 is also. That's true. And on... there's a little bit of a, a tip pull, isn't there? Like a little jar, whoever hits it closest wins some money. There's a big tip pull. Yeah. Um, and in fact, Robert Garrigus is famous for putting in quite a lot of money in that tip pool. And so the, the money for the caddy that hits it the closest there can, can be in the thousands of dollars. Wow. That's more than you get for winning the caddy, the caddy tournament at the end of the year. Yes. <laughs> Darn, I didn't get that on the snap, but I did get the shot. Make sure, make, sure you, make sure you don't lose it. It actually is hard. I don't think people realize this. As a caddy, to literally have almost zero feel. You don't get to hit shots. You don't get to hit putts. And then you have to make these decisions as if you've been playing the game yourself. It's very hard to have feel and touch when you're not playing, when you're, when you're literally just carrying a bag and you've got a whole bunch of other chores to do. Right, I, I agree. I think there's a few things that factor into that. One, again, and I keep going back to this, how well do you know your player, your player's tendencies, so that if he, for example, 
uh, has a little bit of a tendency to miss right under high pressure situations. Maybe you don't go for the green in two if there's water right of that green and there's a lot on the line at that point in time. Yeah. Maybe you lay up, maybe that's the better decision. And because you know your player well, that that's, that's the choice that you help him make. And then on top of that, the other thing is the experience that you have as a caddy in seeing many, many players in many, many different situations. Right. So you have that experience to be able to help them in, the, in that situation. One of the things that I learned from Billy Mayfair when I was working for him at Colonial one year, we were in between two clubs on the 18th hole. I don't remember the yardages. I, I know it was some type of a wedge or a nine iron. I think that's what we were in between. And he said to me, he says, this ground is typically very hard here. And so when you, when you hit the ball, when you hit the shot here and the ground is very firm, it tends to go a little bit farther than it normally would if the ground uh, had less resistance to it. So he, he gave that insight to me and that, you know, I hold that with me for any future time. Hmm. Now let me ask you this, is the caddy allowed to mark your ball? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, the caddy is not allowed to mark your ball. Um, and to the best of my knowledge, the caddy is not allowed to put a ball in play. Yeah. However, I have seen this, if I can make a comment, if I was to put a quarter. Do you have a quarter on you? I don't have a quarter, but I have a marker. Let's use that. Okay. I've seen, I've seen markers here. I've, I've done this many times. Okay. So you, you get to the green, the player marks the ball, yep. and tosses the ball to you to, to clean it. Right. And then the player walks to the other side of the hole to, to read the putt. Now you've finished cleaning it, and maybe he's over there and somebody else is in his way, you can't toss it to him, or he's just focused in on reading his putt, and so you don't want to toss it to him, but you want to go on with the next step in your, in your, in your duties. So you put the ball down, but you put it down behind the marker, this and allows him to see it as well from a distance. Especially if it's a longer mm. putt, yeah, absolutely. A lot of times they'll ask you to do that on okay. purpose, intentionally. So there you go. So it's not in play, but that's also legal where he can now actually read his putt from the other side of the hole. Absolutely 100% legal to do that. Make sure you guys follow me on Snapchat, PGATD. Also behind the scenes vlog, Gabriel Wider, YouTube channel, links all down below. <laughs> Is that, that the like, first time you said that? Yeah. The first time, right? A little bit of a... I thought fish talked a lot. Yeah. I did. I just misread it. That's good. <laughs> Ooh, you never know in this game, do you? You never you know. You just never know in this game. Throw that out there saying that I'm overkill because I tend to do most more work than any other caddy as far as getting information on the golf course, whether it's rolling balls to old hole locations or checking yardages in the yardage book or adding yardages to the yardage book or walking the course before and after.